phone. I know you get these root digs and boy, I got a 12 foot root system here. But in reality, the majority of your roots are in a very shallow layer of, of ground. Yep. So you could very easily overcome that with your irrigation water in pivot country and things like yeah. that. Well, and, and going back to FOSS, you know, we were talking about, I'm, a, I'm still a fan of having some in furrow. I because, like a little. Because, you know, at the end of the day, that first, I, I just go back to that first drink and what phosphorus does. I mean, ATP, getting energy. For us to get a good emergent stand, we want all of those plants cranking from that first drink. Yeah. And if that soil is lacking phos or it's not releasing because the soil temperature is too cold. Oh, okay? that's another big one. Well, it just comes to the part of phosphorus and furrow in proportion makes a lot of sense now if we get past that part and talk about when does that plant actually use the rest of that foss well heck yeah later in the year but then the argument always is how are you supposed to get it into the root zone because it doesn't move now you can make the arguments of foliar feeding and i think it's nature's um has something on their flyer that one pound of foss foliar is equivalent to 20 pounds in the ground I mean, I, I mean, there's probably some truth to it. There's probably some truth to that. It's the study from Michigan state that was done in the seventies, seventies or eighties. I can speak to it more from a micronutrient standpoint. And we see similar, uh, efficiency factors with, you know, a chelated micronutrient fertilizer. I'm not talking about getting zinc sulfate and making your own mix, but when you get a real chelate, you're seeing roughly that 10 to one efficiency factor as well. Okay. Okay. So that's opportunity for management when it comes to FOSS. Yeah, and I think you have to go back to your cold soils as well. Yeah. So what corn, early corn, always comes up purple. And a lot of times my uh, phosphorus in the soil is more than adequate. And a lot of that is just the the soil is cold. The biology is not working yet. It's not cycling the phosphorus well. The fungi in particular are asleep. And that's why you're getting purpling. It's not because you didn't apply the phosphorus. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. And then also I think about two, you know, we talk about a lot of studies, um, like you mentioned about your 1034 O study that you had yeah. where, where some of the effects of the biology was a very negative effect to it yeah, at the and, time, right? And not because 1034 O is bad. It's just, it's a very high salt content. Yes. And that's very harsh to little organisms that grow in water layers in the soil. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we do find a, a lot uh, a lot of knockback, I guess, of the of a 1034 a And then just like uh, if you, the most uh, notable example is soybean and the rhizobia and the nodule. Soybeans need nitrogen. Uh, soybeans respond from nitrogen fertilizer. I mean, hands down. But if you apply too much, you start to hurt the nodule, and then the nodule can't provide the two-thirds of the nitrogen that it needs to, and then your whole system collapses. Phosphorus and fungi are very similar. Yep. So a lot of our natural phosphorus is in the soil, and it is going to be provided through this surface area. The surface area is the root system. It's yep. capturing more. But yep. the surface area is also the fungal associations with the ground biology and the root. So it makes you more surface area, a bigger system, so to speak. Yes. So if you're using too much available phosphorus, those organisms that cycle phosphorus, they're going to shut down just like a rhizobium nodule. Well, when I get to the point like there, it's definitely, it matters what that, the concentration is what, well, it, what yes. was, it's triggering it, right? Yeah. So, so in like that situation, something to look at and something I like, and I'd say there's some research that supports it, uh, is adding those carbon-based products to help buffer salts, number one. I mean, it is going to buffer salts. It hides salts. Yes. Yes, it's going to hide salt. It'll even trick your EC meter. Like, it's really yeah. hiding the salt. Yeah, so if you're hiding the salt there, then almost masking, like you have the fertility there, but it's almost putting a mask cover to have more of a slow release of it. It does Versus, make it slow release. You know, I don't think we have to to to, to, to quietly foot around yeah, that one, right? Yeah. It is yeah. making it a slow release because it's a chelate. Yeah. And the, the a carbon, a humic, uh, a sugar, amino, and then even on the far end of the extreme, like an EDTA, what they are 100%. is claws, they're yep. wraps, yep. they wrap the charge, and salt is measured by that charge. So you're literally reducing the saltiness of the solution. 
which when you do that does help biology, but also helps the plant, right? So if we get plants these, don't like salts. Well, yeah, yeah. So if you're chelating them, making them less abundant per se, the plant it's more fl- friendly. Yeah, to the, the plant, plant doesn't know it's there. Yeah, and so, then biology starts to chew on it, starts to eat some of that carbon, and now suddenly we're slowly releasing these nutrients. Well, now you have almost like a biologically chelation because they're consuming it, excreting it out. I mean. That's There's, truly biologically available once yeah. it's passed through an organism. Yeah. This is one of the, you know, one of the fundamentals I learned about uh, soil health and uh, soil organic matter. You know what soil, or, I, you know, stupid me, it's like, <laughs> oh, that must be the residue, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I could see some black in here. It, it, the majority of your soil organic matter is the biology. And when you cook the sample, you kill that. That is the carbon. That is sustainable organic carbon. Okay. Okay. So phosphorus in that time, I I think we've kind of hit the things that we can do early on. We're not saying it's not important. And if your soil sample, yeah. if, if your soil sample saying you're low on FOSS, you, you are going to see a <laughs> yield response. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Guys, if you like the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat- podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.